What is up, friends? Thanks for tuning in. My name is Mitchell, and today I'm going to be talking about Brian Grazer and his curiosity conversations. So I recently discovered Brian, and I couldn't help myself but to just to read a ton about him and take a super deep dive into everything that he's about, and I absolutely loved it. So here are my top takeaways on Brian Grazer and his curiosity conversations. 15 years before meeting Eminem, Brian Grazer met Wu-Tang's old dirty bastard, ODB. Brian heard ODB on the radio and just wanted to meet him, so he did. That connection eventually led to Brian creating the movie American Gangster, the Made in America to concert with Jay-Z, and years later, 8 Mile, after a strange meeting with Eminem. Brian does what he calls curiosity conversations. He started the routine over 35 years ago, and he does them as often as once a week. So let's take a step back. Who is Brian Grazer? Really, he's just a normal, curious dude, but he's carved out quite an impressive career and has become one of the biggest producers in film and television. He's been nominated for 43 Academy Awards and 198 Emmys, probably even more than that at this point. He produced some of my favorite movies and TV shows as well, including Apollo 13, A Beautiful Mind, Liar Liar, Friday Night Lights, The Show 24, Shout Out Jack Bauer, the list goes on. I recently discovered Brian and his curiosity conversations, and I loved it. Sometimes I get so excited, it's easy to take a deep dive. And that's exactly what happened, but not quite in the way you might think. I started with his book, A Curious Mind. It was so good, I read it in a day. And quick note, I've never read a book in just a single day. So I was one, pumped about that, and two, just really excited about the message Brian was sharing. Then three things happened. The first thing was, I decided I was going to conduct my own curiosity conversations. I already sort of do this, but Brian's approach is just going to be way more fun and better. And quick update, I recorded my first one as of this blog post back in February. And the second thing, an exciting insight sparked into my head. It wasn't really a goal, but more of a feeling or a knowing that I will have a curiosity conversation with Brian one day. And the third thing was I started my curiosity conversation target list. The only criteria, I just have to be excited about talking to them. So that was easy. I quickly listed out 15 people and thought to myself, man, this is already fun. Whenever I'm inspired by someone, I go in. I start reading and listening to anything I can discover on the person. I follow on social media and start studying there too. I also like to reach out to people directly when I love their work. In the past, I've sent handwritten notes, personalized videos, voice notes, emails, DMs, etc. I just want to let them know and thank them. After this excitement, I couldn't help but to notice two distinct forms of motivation. One was effortless and fun, and the other was more heavy and strenuous. And that's the distinction between push and pull. Push is often an external motivator, a comparison or a metric. While it can be an effective form of motivation, it also can be exhausting. Pull, on the other hand, is internal and much more graceful. When you're pulled into something, it doesn't feel like work. It feels natural or rhythmic. It brings you into a state of flow. Things you're pulled into, you'd likely do anyway for fun. You might even dance back to your desk from the bathroom. I like to do that sometimes, but only when I'm being pulled, opposed to just walking slowly with your head down. You're excited about this type of work. I was definitely pulled to start this website. Sure, writing is challenging at times, but I also love it. It's a creative outlet for me, and I get to learn more by sharing. When I discovered Brian and his curiosity conversations, I was pulled into it as well. I didn't overthink it. I was just excited, so I read his book. It's clear that Brian was pulled into his curiosity conversations too, and he followed it. And the best part is, by following what we're pulled into, we discover and create things we otherwise wouldn't have found. But if we ignore the pulls and focus only on the pushes, we might lose sight altogether. The journey becomes difficult, it feels much more like an uphill trek when it could be a downhill adventure. So it's up to you, which will you choose? I've been pushing for a long time and I'm just switching over to explore where I'm being pulled. It feels right and it feels fun and I'm legit excited for much more to come. Thank you, peace.